facets represent a very powerful aspect of ggplot. We can do very exciting things with facets. Let's take a look at what facets are all about. So facets are basically used to plot subsets of the data in different plots. So for example, something like this, right? Earlier, we had done a single scatter plot of displacement versus highway mileage. Okay, now what we are saying is, how about we do the same thing, but split up the data for cars of different classes, right? So that's a scatter plot of displacement versus highway mileage only for the two two-seater cars. This is the same plot for SUVs and so on. Okay, so essentially what we want to do is to ask the system to split up the data into cars of, let's say, a diff uh, of different classes and plot the scatter plot for each class separately. Okay, you will be actually quite amazed to see how easy this is to do with ggplot. Very simple, right? So here I'm saying ggplot data is mpg, geom point mapping, uh, displacement is x, highway is y. Up to this point, it's exactly the same code that you would use to do a single scatter plot of uh, a simple scatter plot of all the points. And then you just add plus. So you're adding this faceting as just another layer. So plus, and then you say, oh, by the way, facet wrap. That is, create for me facets and wrap the facets around into multiple lines. That's what this n row equals 2 is. n row equals 2 means basically put all the individual plots, arrange them in two rows, and create each facet based on the value of class. That is, use the attribute class to determine the facets. So for every different value of class, the system will generate a different plot. What plot is it going to generate? Exactly what we have defined before that. Right? Because we have said, I want a scatter plot. If we had not added facets, we would have got one big scatter plot. Now that we have added facets, we'll get a separate facet, a separate scatter plot for each value of class. Okay? That's how simple it is to get facets in R, in ggplot. Okay, so that's what is going on. And of course, what you put here should be a discrete variable. Uh, actually, R will do the job even if you put a continuous variable, but it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so let's look further more uh, at facets. So this time, notice what I've done, displacement highway, exactly the same thing as before, except that in facet, I've set facet wrap, and I've put two variables here. That is, instead of creating one facet for each class alone, I've said create a facet for every combination of class and drive. Drive, by the way, if you remember, is front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or four wheel drive. So there are three possible combinations of that. In class, there are, I think, seven possible combinations. So if you say class plus drive, there are 21 different possible combinations. Okay, so we are saying divide the data into different sets based on the combination of these values. That is, create a separate set for each distinct combination and plot it. Okay, and this is what you get. Well, why are we not seeing 21 different facets? That's because there are not, all the 21 possible combinations don't occur. Okay, only the 12 combinations shown here, only those have occurred, the others don't show up in the data. So there's no plot for them. Okay. Uh, personally, I don't consider this to be a very useful way of doing it. There's a slightly better way of doing it, and I'll see that, I'll show you uh, shortly, I'll show you that. Okay, and this time we use the end call option to say divide the data into three different columns. We could have said the same thing like this. Instead of expressing it like this, saying tilde and then giving the variables, I could also have given a vector of the names of the columns. Okay, both of these would produce exactly the same output, which is this. 
Okay. So remember earlier we did a histogram of the mileage, histogram of city mileage, and that's what came out uh, when we did that. ggplot mpg aes city geom histogram. Notice that this is slightly different from what we have done earlier in that we put the aesthetic within ggplot itself. We will revisit that point for now just take it as it is. Okay. But suppose we say well I want to generate this histogram for different values of the drive of the car. No problem just put the same code and as, add a facet wrap. Okay. So up to this the code is exactly the same as before but we just say plus facet wrap till they drive and it generates a separate plot for each value of drive. Okay. Now if you wanted to make the graph, graph a little more impressive we could have mapped color to uh, drive as well so that these three histograms would have had a different color. Okay. But that is just uh, you know it doesn't really have much meaning because they are already separate but distinguishing them by color might just make it look a little more impressive that's all but that could have been done as well. Okay, so once again you are seeing how easy it is to take a plot which is plotted for the entire data and then just split it up into separate plots just by adding an additional line saying facet wrap. Okay, now earlier if you remember we did faceting on two variables this one class and drive. Okay, there is another way to facet on two variables and that's what I prefer. And here notice what we have done here. ggplot data is mpg and mapping is displacement is x, highway is y. And this time I am calling the function called facet grid drive tilde cylinder. That is I want to facet, I want to have a separate plot for every combination of drive and cylinder but arrange it in the form of a grid. Notice the results come like this. We have said drive is on the y axis right so that those are the values of drive front wheel rear wheel four wheel drive and cylinder is on the x axis so you see here four five six eight okay so for uh, cars with four wheel drive and four cylinders that's the scatter plot four wheel drive and eight cylinders that's the plot and so on so this represents rear wheel drive eight cylinder cars that's the scatter plot okay so this I think is a little better, easier to read rather than all the discrete combinations of drive and cylinder uh, listed. This way because the values are arranged in a grid, it's a lot more easy to see what's going on. And of course you notice here that that plot is empty. These two plots are empty. That is because there is no data for those particular combinations. In other words, there is no uh, four wheel front, four wheel drive uh, so not four wheeler, four cylinder rear wheel drive cars. Okay, this is four cylinder rear wheel. In our data set, there seems to be no value for this. That's why these plots are coming up empty because there is no, those combinations don't have even a single case. Okay, there are many other option, options for facet grids. We won't get into those options, but just to let you know that there are things you can control. So for example, uh, if you want to use only one variable for facet grid you can do this. You can label x and y axis. Okay, So for example I've got the labels here. If you by default label both is the option. If you want to increase uh, margins or have margins you can say margins equals true. Okay, Or you can even have expressions like this. Okay, Which we will look at later on not really needed. And uh, right now what you'll notice is that in all the faceting options all of the individual plots had the same scales right if you looked at the x-axis and y-axis scales they are identical okay but if you want to let the system change that you can do that so that's what this option is uh, scales equals free okay and space equals free also allows the system freedom to determine how much space to provide between the individual plots. Okay. Now most of the time the default options are good enough. We won't get into many of these options uh, in, in this course. But you can explore them. If a need arises you can explore them and use some of these capabilities.